How's it guys? Everyone who's ever played RF4 knows there are a lot of features and systems in this game and they aren't explained at all. So I'm going to show you enough so you can get a basic understanding of the game starting with location. It really really helps to know where you are because to be prepared to catch fish you need to have all the right gear, right bait, you need food, drink, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to start by going to the campsite, which is a, a place you can store items and you can cook food. And this is the campsite on Mosquito Lake. Is that the tent? You can store a few items if you want. There's the campfire. In the campfire, you can cook tea and coffee and various foods. There's also various other things that will come much later when you level up your food skills. Okay, let's go back to where you spawn. the boat station. Uh, it's very rare to use the boat on a mosquito, it's a pretty small lake. If you open this up you can buy a ticket then you can go hop in the boat that's over there. Uh, behind me is the fish market. This is where you go to sell all your fish that you catch. Up here is the cafe. I'll explain this further uh, later on. There's a vending machine where you can buy some soda. There's the grocery store. This is where you buy food and drink. This is the ATM. This is where you can exchange premium currency for in-game currency. This is the hardware store. You can buy various tools and supplies. This is the tackle store. This is where you buy new rods, reels, lines, all that good stuff. Bait. This is where you get free food once a day. Once an in-game day. Every 24 hours. This right here is the player house. Every player gets a free house on Mosquito Lake where you can come here you can store items like such. I don't have anything stored at the moment. Or you can go inside. Here you can light a fire which will increase your comfort. I'll explain more about that later. And you can put various decorations and uh, fish you've caught I'll explain more about that as well. And your rods and reels and stuff. And you can sit at the table and read this little book. This table here. I mean, back outside, you can go to the administration where you can enter. You buy a map, or I believe you get a, a map for free when you when you start the game. But in case you lose it or something, you can buy another. You can also, if you press Y, you can get spare float tackle. In case you, you lost it somehow. You can also get spare spinning tackle. I, I believe it, it comes with bait as well. When you get the, the spinning tackle. Back here, something you shouldn't have to do for a long time. You can enter the workshop and any of your gear, you can uh, repair it. But you shouldn't have to do that for quite quite some time. The items in the game are very durable. And what's my next place? 
this is the taxidermist. This is where you go to mount a fish that you've caught. Uh, just a warning, it's very expensive. But if you catch a trophy and you want to put it on the wall in your house, this is where you go. You'll just select the fish and then you'll select a background. And if you have a dream fish voucher, it'll be free. But you're not likely to have that in the beginning of the game. And you can make one. Next up, I'll explain the interface. First of all, if you look in the top left corner, it, there's a few keys you can press. You can press escape and you've got various other things here. You've got your map, you've got the records, you've got competitions, challenges, statistics, crafting, all that good stuff. If you press F1, it gives you the quick help. This is very useful, shows all the key binds. So if you ever forget what is the particular key you need to press for something, this is where you can find it. Just press F1. And you can press Q to open the chat. This opens the chat box. Uh, you can scroll through all the records here. Uh, you can see all the players and you can click messages so you can send or receive private messages to other players. And this is you can chat to anyone who's in this area. And currently there are 76 players in this area. Down here, we have our experience bar. This number in the center here is, the, is my current level. This is my current XP. And this is the total XP I'll need to reach the next level. This is the energy bar. Energy uh, helps when you're fighting a big fish. If you don't have any energy, it's going to be very difficult to get the fish out of the water. Uh, this is your food bar. Your, your food bar affects your energy. If, you, if you're hungry, you cannot regain energy. This is the, the health bar, which is not currently used in the game. And this is your comfort bar. Your comfort affects how fast your energy uh, regenerates. Uh, comfort is affected by the weather. So if it's raining, it's windy, it's cold, the character is not going to be very comfortable. And that will affect how, how fast your, your energy regenerates. I'll show you how to increase that later. Over here we have the compass with coordinates of your exact location. Um, this little dot here is the direction the wind is blowing from. This here is your keep net. It will tell you exactly how many fish you have in your keep net. And up here we have the weather cur currently partly cloudy. Uh, it's 10-12 uh, it's in the morning, 14 degrees Celsius and there's your wind speed that will affect you uh, when you when you're casting but hard to cast when the when the wind's blowing it back at you next up one of the most important things is food that's how you increase food and drink is how you increase your energy and your comfort uh, the best thing to increase your comfort is tea the best thing to increase your energy is anything sweet like a uh, uh, this sugar duck classic here this is fantastic for increasing your energy plus maybe a, a soda like the lemonade and anything sweet like chocolate i believe there's chocolate here there's chocolate that'll in increase your energy you can also buy here uh, where is it now there a pack of tea you're gonna need that to make your own tea next up we go to the hardware store now to make tea you're gonna need a tea kettle you will also need matches and firewood 
So once you once you have your tea kettle, your matches and your firewood, then you're gonna go to the campsite where I took us earlier, which is down here, and you are going to light the campfire and then you'll be able to make your tea. Another important thing is this right here, the shovel. This is absolutely fantastic for getting bait. Let me show you. If you hold the U key, it shows all your rods and reels, as well as equipment. If it has a little star, uh, if you open your inventory and you right click on it, and you can say favorite, and then it'll, it'll come to the top. So, what we're looking for is the shovel. I've put it in one of my quick slots. Uh, you can dig anywhere, even in, indoors, whatever. And then you'll get some worms or whatever. Depends on your skills as well. I'll explain that later. As you can see here, it's used up a lot of energy. That's one of the, the drawbacks of, of digging for bait is that it uses up a lot of energy. So you, you'll have to eat something sweet or drink some coffee or some soda to bring that back up. Next up, we have bait crafting. If you press the N key, it will open up your list of recipes. Now, one of, one of the, the earliest, most useful baits is wet bread. So you're going to buy yourself some threaded loaf from the grocery store. And then you'll click make. And it will make some wet bread. And then you've got some bait, which is pretty useful for crucian and gibble. Um, various other carp, even a uh, common roach will eat wet bread. Uh, as, as you make more and more, you'll, you'll level up your skills and then you'll be able to unlock different recipes. As you can see, a pearl barley oatmeal. All of this stuff can be bought in the grocery store. Like say, for instance, pearl barley here. We go inside the grocery store. And then we're going to look for pearl barley. There's the pearl barley. We buy one of those. Close that. Press N. Click pearl barley. Click make. And then you've got 54 pieces of pearl barley. Very easy way to get bait. You will, of course, need to unlock that. If we look at our skills by pressing the O key. And we go to, I believe it's harvesting baits. Yeah. You'll go through, as as you get more skill points and you level up, you'll unlock these. So this, I, I believe it's uh, increments of every five levels. So uh, I think you have these two in the beginning. And then at level five, I, I believe you have this as well. At level 5, you'll get this, making potatoes. And then at level 10, this, and so on. I'm not I'm not 100% sure on the level requirements, but you will go through it and you will unlock these things. Other things you can do is making lures. Uh, simply by buying the materials required and making the lures, which is under the N key once again, and then you click lures. Say create, you buy the, the materials and the mold, and then you click make, and you can make your own lures. You can also make leaders when it comes to that, and you can make food. Some some food can be made right from here. Others you need you need the campfire or um, a grill or or a fish dryer or whatever. Next up. We're going to look at ground bait. Ground bait can be used to, uh, when you throw it in the water, it'll increase your bite rate. So if you're using the right ground bait, you can end up catching more fish. So for ground bait, you go to the tackle store. You click the ground 
ground bait tab. Now, early on, because your skills are low, you won't be able to make very much. So the best thing to do is to come by crackers, you just buy one of those, and then we'll open the N key once again, click on ground baits, click ground baits, click mixture, and then you'll click your ground crackers, and you'll add that, and you click make. This won't be super effective, but it's better than nothing. Eventually, you're going to want to unlock, as your skills level up, you're going to unlock new ones. So then you're going to want to make specific ones. So if you're targeting Crucian and Gibble, then you'll make this one. And then here, here's the recipe. So you buy ground crackers, millet porridge, and sunflower oil. Or here's one for Rach. Ground crackers, bloodworm, caramel. All of those can be bought here in the table store under the ground bait section. You get your basics, that's your crackers, and your additives. That's basically like flavoring that you add. And then your attractant, which is um, a, a scent, so it will attract the fish. Next up, I'll show you my favorite method for making money in this game which is right here by the cafe. In the cafe, you have cafe orders. So say for instance, I catch three gibble cop uh, that weigh 30 grams and up. If I bring them here, they'll give me five silver. Now three gibble cop at 30 grams, won't, if you sell it to the fish market, you won't get as much money, not at all. I, I don't even think you'll get one silver for 330 gram gibble cop. So if you know where to fish or just fish randomly, so what you get. Uh, and before you take it to the, the fish market, you come here, see if you can fill any of these orders. And then you'll make a significant amount of money. Now, how to float fish. The, the tutorial gives you a basic idea of how to float fish. But sometimes you forget or you don't, you don't understand the explanation on how to do it. So we'll come here. By the way, how you do that, you hold the U key and then you can select all your gear. You can add it here. So if I take this. Uh, this is the rod I'm holding in my hand. You put that here, and now it is in, in a hot key. So press another key, switch to a different rod, press the one key, and it's back to the rod I put in, in the one slot. Yeah, let's just. I would advise going for small hooks. And a, a worm is a nice general bait that you can target many different species with. Okay. Now, you're first going to want to set your float depth. Now, many fish will sit at the bottom. So, in this area, the bottom is at 80 centimeters. I think it's about 85, somewhere there. So you want to be as close to the bottom. And then you're just going to cast out while holding the left click. And then throw your bait in the water. And there it sits. Okay, now, the, the thing that used to confuse me when I first started was how to know when to strike. Because, as we'll see there, that right there is a good time to strike. And there I've caught my first fish. Right. A good time to strike is when the bobber uh, pushes above and out of the water, when it travels to the side, or when it's pulled right underneath the water. 
So we had a good example of when is the right time to strike. Let's look for an example of when is the wrong time to strike. So we're going to send we're going to wait. There. You see, there was activity. The fish was biting, but that was the wrong time to bite because the fish was just nibbling. It hadn't actually taken the bait into its mouth. So when I struck, I just pulled the bait away from the fish. Uh, once you've made a bit of money fishing, uh, you're going to want to come to the tackle store. And you, the, the starter gear is a bit weak. You might notice you get your line broken, or you might think that you, you need something better to catch the bigger fish, like carp. Or you just simply want a different way to fish. So you're going to come here, and one thing I recommend is to buy these starter kits. Okay, you don't have to buy all of them. That will be a lot of money. But uh, say this one is very, very cheap. Uh, we're going to want to go... Say you want to step up your float game. You're going to buy this one. It's a, quite a lot stronger, so you can use a thicker line. Or, if you want to try a different style of fishing, we can go spinning, universal, and we'll buy this one here. Or, one of my favorite methods of fishing, we can go feeder fishing. And we'll buy this here. Okay, let me show you some feeder fishing. Let's go back to our spot we were at. We're going to find a feeder rod. We're going to put it in the slot. Now, if you press B, you can open up this menu here where you can change your bait, you can change hook, and so on. One of the things the game doesn't explain to you is how to set up a rod. So if you wanted to, you didn't want to buy one of the sets. You want to buy your own rod that you saw something you like, you want to buy that. You saw a particular reel, a particular rod. Uh, you want to set it up exactly the way you want it. So you go buy your rod and then what do you buy with it? How do you know What's the best line it can use? And what other kind of equipment you'll need for it? So the first thing you're going to want to look at is the load capacity. For this rod, the load capacity is 7.8 kilograms. For that, you do not want your fishing line to exceed that number. As you can see here, it's 7.5 kilograms. And we'll ignore the leader for now. So if I hook a fish that's too big and it pulls all my line out, the first thing to break will be my line. If this number is higher, say it's 8 kilograms, the first thing to break will be my rod. And we do not want that. Rods are very expensive. We do not want to break them. Line is, is very easy to replace. So that must always be the first thing to break. Now secondly, your reel, although it doesn't have to be as strict as this, um, like for, for instance this reel I have here, this is 5.8 kilogram max drag. You, you're going to want to get as close to this as possible, although you do not have to, because a, a reel as a, a friction brake. So a friction brake can take a lot of the stress away from the from the fish damaging your equipment. So that's why you don't have to be as strict with this. And for that, 
to set the friction brake, you just scroll your metal mask wheel. Now, you are going to want it to be fairly low. I like to put it at 15. So that when a, a fish pulls very hard, the friction brake is loose, so it allows the fish to pull line off your reel. Now, one thing you never want to do is lock it like that. If you do that and a fish pulls hard enough, it'll immediately break your line. So you're going to want, in the beginning of the fight, you're going to want to give it enough room to expend its energy. And then once it is tired, then you can reel it in. Okay, then we're just going to cast this again. Move that way. Then we're going to tighten it up. By pressing the Y key while looking at the rod, we're going to tighten up our line so that it's easy to notice when, when, it, when the fish bites. And now we're going to wait and I'll show you what it looks like when the fish is nibbling and when it has actually taken the, the lure and is running with it. And then it's a good time to strike. Okay. As you can see, there's a fish biting. And that is a good time to strike. When, the, when you see the line moving like that and the tip of the rod pulled down quite hard like that, that is a good time to strike. And there you see I've caught a perch. Now, to help us, when you press V again, you click here and you add a bite indicator, which should come with your set. Another interesting thing is a a feed mesh so normally you would have a sinker in this this slot so if you add a feeder cage now you can take your, your ground bait you made whichever one you just take that and you stick it in there so that when you cast the, the feed spreads out in the water. Another thing to know when using a spinning reel is to set your retrieval speed. You hold down the R key and then you scroll your middle mouse wheel. And that can change the the speed with which you retrieve. So say let's put it really low. And then we cast out. Now when we're really in, it's very slow. So when you hold down R, and then you increase the speed, and it speeds up your wheeling. And my lure is stuck on something. So let's just... There we go, it's loose now. Another interesting thing about having a spinning reel is you can put a clip on your line. So say you only want to cast 10 meters. Then you hold the control key and you press plus or minus and then it will put a clip on your line. So now we go say 15 meters. Now if you hold shift while you're left clicking, you can make a max cast. So now we can cast as hard as we want, and yet the line will stop at 15 meters. So if you know that all the fish are biting out at 15 meters, then you can clip your line, and it'll it'll stop there exactly on the spot. Another thing about ground bait, so let's take that one. Another thing you can do to increase your bite rate is you take these and you simply throw them in the water. 
in the area you're fishing. And you're gonna want to throw about eight to ten every twelve endgame hours, and it will increase the bite rate in that area. And then, coupled with the fishing rod in the feeder cage, it's going it's going to increase your bite rate. So, even if you're not using a, a, a feeder a feeder rod, say you're using um, a, a telescopic rod, you can still increase your bite rate by simply throwing the balls into the water. Okay, next up, I'm going to show you spin fishing. So we get out. We got our spinning rod with a lure on. Okay. Now what we want to do is we simply cast out, and because we have a, a spinner on, you want to close that your spool. And now we're going to set our our speed. Oh, I have a fish on already. Okay. Another nice little fetch. Okay. First, we're going to set our friction bait to quite low because predatory fish tend to strike quite hard, so there's a good chance you'll break your line if it's very thin as the fish strikes. Okay. So we cast that again. And then we're going to set our retrieval speed. Now, for spinners, you want to keep it quite low. And, wow, there's another fish on again. Not normally quite this active. That's another perch. Quite a nice one, actually. This actually gives me another good point that I forgot to mention. This little green tag here indicates that this is quite a valuable fish. It's a nice size and the uh, the uh, fish market will pay really well for that, this this fish. See, these others, they're not really enough. They don't have a green tag. It's because they're not really a nice size. This, this is 52 grams. This is 380 grams. It's quite a big difference. It's a little tiny fish. It's people aren't going to pay very much money for a little tiny fish that isn't going to feed them very well. Right. Okay, back to spin fishing. You're going to want to set your retrieval speed for spinners. I prefer to keep it between 16 and 22. So you're going to cast out again. Let's see if I get a, a fish immediately again. Probably not. Okay. And then you're simply going to retrieve it. Just like that. And now, a spinner, you don't have to do, you don't really have to do any fancy retrieval. See? There's a fish on just like that. Just simply because of the, the way the the, the lure um, moves in the water, it's quite enticing to the fish. Other lures require certain actions to be done to attract the fish. But for now, this is all you need to know. Because you are going to have to level up once again. You're going to have to level up your, your spinning skills to start fishing with other things like spoons, jigging, that's... Uh, little plastic lures and so on now one thing you want to know is how to find fish where do you cast how do you know where to find the fish okay first off one thing that's good to know is that fishes lack what is referred to as structure all of this here all of this grass this is structure this pier is structure. Let, let's walk around and see if we can find some more. These these boats, these lilies, it's all structure. This this pier here is structure. It's here. Here's a perfect place to fish. Because it has structure. It's it's places where where the fish can hide, where predators can ambush prey, and where they can get food. See a lot of fish eat insects. A lot of fish eat vegetation. Insects will be sitting on, on the plants and then they'll fall in the water and then the fish can eat them. 
Um, the fish can eat the vegetation that's right there. And so on. That's how you find fish. But sometimes you can cast on a spot like this and get absolutely nothing. It's because you could be using the wrong bait, you could be fishing at the wrong time, or there can be simply no fish there. Another good method that I, I like to use to find fish is to go to an outside source. Uh, one of my favorite here is on the Russian Fishing Fall Forum, there is a, a thread called Hotspots Reworks. And this one is super handy. So, okay, we on Mosquito Lake, we want to know where are good places to fish. Now, this is, this is just a general guideline. Uh, the fish might not be active one day that you decide to fish there. Uh, but generally, this is a, a good idea of where to look. So, say you want to catch Crucian and Gibble, then you'll click here. And it, these spots that are highlighted are the currently active spots. Now, they might not always be active, but this is a, a, a good idea to go off of. And this is also a nice way to fill your, your cafe orders. So, this spot here it says 4573. So, we're going to look here. There's 4573. So you know where it is. And it says here, clip 10 meters. So you're going to know you want to cast 10 meters away from where you're standing. And that is the best spot to catch Crucian and Gibble. And then obviously you get all these other ones as well. And you can go all, all over the, the lake. And then you can go here. That's just the picture. There's frogs and bleak. Currently active spots. There's uh, white bream and normal bream, currently active spots, and so on. It's it's n it's not foolproof. Sometimes you may go there and catch nothing, but it, this is a is a good idea on where to look. Uh, another great way is going to the official Russian Fishing for Discord, clicking on the spots section, and then you'll click Mosquito Lake. Uh, people will, will post where they've caught fish and what they've caught it on and that's another great way to look and also another thing is like say you went on the discord and they told you about a, a particular spot say 82 89 they they're catching some nice fish there so then um, it's not indicated on here where 82 89 is but then what we'll do is We'll come to this here. This is another uh, web page that I really, really love. It's super useful. It's called rf4.info. I'll put all the all the links in the description. And then we'll come here. We, I've clicked on, on Mosquito Lake. And then we come here and say 82, 89, and click search. And then it shows you exactly where it is. Another useful thing is, say you're at this spot and you know there's bream here and you know bream like to live in the, in the deep water. So you can move this here and click there. So you know you, you're casting in deep water as this indicates here. It says 4 meters. And that'll show that you need to cast 29 meters to reach the, the hole. And so that's also another useful thing. Okay. If you actually made it this far, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with a nice little tip. Click on this video here, and it will show you a, a nice spot to catch bleak and possibly catch your first trophy. Uh, anyway, cheers, guys. Take care. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.